today we're going to be working a Tunisian crochet square. If you have a long Tunisian hook, this will work great for the square, as in the Tunisian technique, we pull up several loops, sort of like on knitting, that we have on our hook, and then take those off. If you're new to Tunisian, this will be a great way to learn. There are many um, examples, <clears throat> and I have a link to basic Tunisian stitches in the description at the bottom of this video as well. There is an option on the written pattern to do this in standard crochet, and you can follow that if you prefer. So we're going to be mostly watching a chart to make the music design on this square. So to start, we will start with a slip, note, slip knot on our hook, and we're using one size larger, a six millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. We want to chain 44. So 44 chains. Now this next part is what's called the forward pass. So each row in Tunisian we work across as called the forward pass and then back called the return pass. We do not turn our work. We want to start in the second chain from the hook. Now there's a couple techniques. You can turn the chain over and finding that back bump, you can insert your hook under there yarn over, pull up a loop, and leave that loop on your hook. It makes a lovely, you see the full chain at the bottom, so you can do it that way. Another option is to keep your chain forward facing and then just sort of pull up the top loop with your hook and pull up a loop. I find this reduces the curl a little bit, so with Tunisian the work can sometimes curl up just because of how the stitches are made, and doing this method just cuts that down just a bit. So either way is fine. You just insert your hook in each of the chains, starting with the second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So we'll work our way all the way down the chain, pulling up a loop. At the end, we should have 44 loops on the hook. So 44 loops on the hook. And then we do what's called the return pass in Tunisian. So we yarn over, we pull that loop through the first loop on our hook, which basically makes a chain one. Then we yarn over, pull through two loops. So that loop that we had just pulled through and the next loop that was on the hook. And we continue that all the way down, yarn over, pull through two loops. So after you've done a number of stitches, you may want to slide these loops closer to the hook to make it easier to pull them off. So you can just go ahead and work this return pass, yarn over, pull through two loops until you're at the end and you'll be left with one loop only on your hook. First row is complete. You will see how this first edge loop is quite large on mine. To prevent that, you want to snug this first loop. I kind of keep it in that crook part of the hook, that curved part of the hook, nice and tight as we reach into our first loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then slide it down, and that helps that first loop from stretching so large as you saw on that first row. So this is called the Tunisian simple stitch. So we see these loops have formed what we call vertical bars. We insert the hook from the right to the left under that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. And that is the Tunisian simple stitch. So just work down the entire row, picking up these loops for row one. And then our last one, instead of just inserting our hook under that loop, if we turn it to the side, we can see sort of the V formed by the front and the back loop. We want our hook to go under both of those loops for a nice side edge, yarn over, pull up that last loop. So for that first one, we yarn over, pull through just the one loop, then yarn over, pull through two loops for the return pass. 
return pass is simply taking these loops off the hook until there's only one loop left on our hook. So you'll find this chart in the written pattern. Now to make this design, we need to be changing colors. So you can see how these white squares here will be with our main colors. So row two, we will pick up loops this many times and then we need to change color for a few stitches and back to our main color and so on. So there's a few different techniques to do that. You can use your own method. If you've worked color changing in Tunisian before, you can go ahead and do that. I will be showing you what I use. You may want to have some bobbins or some smaller balls of this colored yarn as they will be hanging off the back. <clears throat> because I'm using a white background, I'm not gonna carry my, my color all the way through till I need it the next time. I will use a separate ball for sort of the one half of the square and the second half, but I'll show you that as we go. So you can grab your contrasting color now and I'll help you with row two. Okay, so following the chart, we want to make 14 <clears throat> loops or stitches with our main color. So that's including the first, that's including the first stitch that's on our hook. So we have one, remember to hold that in at your hook so it doesn't stretch too big. Two, three, four, Thirteen and fourteen loops on our hook. So next we want to take our contrast color. Now what I do, again, there are different methods for this. What I do, I like to keep it nice and snug. So I tie it to my main color. Then I just insert my hook under the next loop and use the contrast color to pull up. Now, while we're doing that, I want to carry my main color along. So for this first one, I put it in that loop. I make sure my hook is under that main color before I pull through the contrast color. Now on this next stitch, I make sure my hook goes over the main color to pull up my loop. Then on the next stitch, my hook is under the main color. So this is called the under over technique to carry the yarn along. And we needed three loops in this contrast color. So I'll drop that contrast and let it hang from the back. And then working with my main color again, we want to pick up 14 loops. So this Tunisian simple stitch, hook under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop 14 times. I have four. Thirteen and fourteen of those main color loops. Now it's time for another contrast. So again, I wanna take my second ball and I join it in the same way. I tie it around my main color. Put our hook under the next bar and under the main color thread. Take the contrast color, pull up a loop. Insert under the next bar and over the main color thread yarn over of the contrast, pull up a loop. This time go under the main color, pull up a loop. So I needed three contrast color loops so I can drop that contrast color, take my main color again, pick up these remaining loops. Two, three.
that's nine. And then our last one, instead of just inserting our hook under that loop, if we turn it to the side, we can see sort of a V formed by the front and the back loop. We want our hook to go under both of those loops for a nice side edge, yarn over, pull up that last loop. Then we need to take these loops off for the return pass. Once we get to the contrast color, we'll drop the main color and use the contrast for these three loops for the return pass, and then come back to the main color, and I'll show you how we do that. So for that first one, we yarn over, pull through just the one loop, then yarn over, pull through two loops for the return pass. Return pass is simply taking these loops off the hook. Now I've reached my contrast color. You can see how that loop has really stretched for me. So as I grab that, I just want to snug those loops in so they're not quite so loose. And I just leave my main color down. I'll show you in a minute what I do with that. So we yarn over, pull through these next three loops. Okay, let me drop the contrast. Now I want my main color again. This time I just take it, and not too tight, but I just lay it across the back of my work it's not pulling my stitches, but it's not hanging loose. And I just grab it to pull through the next. So next row, as we work our forward pass here, I will show you how I work over that loop. If we had many more stitches than we do at this point, I would cut my main color yarn and have separate balls of it for each section. So I don't have these long loops across the back, but just for a few stitches, I just carry it. So we pull the main color off our loop. And I've come to my next contrast color, so drop the main color, pick up the contrast, do the return pass, drop the contrast, pull my main color across gently, so it lays across the back and finish the return pass. Until there's only one loop left on our hook. Okay, and that looks a little bit messy there, but that evens out as we work our next row. So for the next row, we will work the same amount of loops in the main color, then we'll have four stitches of the contrast color and only 12 loops in between as we have five loops of the contrast there. So picking up these first loops again, remembering to keep that first loop quite tight as we pick up the next loop so it doesn't stretch too large. Now you can see how my first one is quite large compared to the second one, so how that technique works at keeping it a nice edge and not stretch too far. Okay, so now I have reached my contrast. So we want to do two things. We're carrying this main color yarn back the other way, and we want to secure that extra thread that we had last round. So I'm just going to grab my contrast color. So the first thing is basically go under the next loop. Then we want our hook to go under our carried, both of our carried of the main color to yarn over with the contrast and pull that loop through. Next loop under, this time we're going over those main color threads and under again. So there's that one carry thread there. Then this last one doesn't have a carry thread. I'll go over my main color as I pull up the fourth stitch. And then we'll drop the contrast 
work the main color for just 12. So that's two, three, four, five, six, eleven and twelve. Drop the main color, pick up my contrast color. First stitch I just pick up the loop normal. I go under my main color thread. Under this one I'm going over both of the main color on the back. This time I go under both of those main color threads at the back. This one will be over. And then I pick up this next loop here, still with the contrast color, go under my main color thread. So I should have five loops then with the contrast, drop the contrast and finish the row with main color. Now remembering on this final end stitch to go under both loops at the side edge to pull up your last loop. Then you can go ahead and work the return pass, remembering to change back to the contrast color on those sections. And I'll meet you for row four. So looking back at the chart again, for rows four, It'll be worked the same way in this first part. You need to come over one extra stitch for the contrast, just do two. Then you have three and two more of the contrast. So in this section here, I would just carry my contrast yarn through because we only need it for those two stitches and then bring it back on the return pass. So I'm going to let you work rows four and five by yourself right now. And I'll meet you at the end of those rows. So your work will look something like this at the end of those five rows. I left my last two loops on, on this fifth row, because for row six, there's a contrast color horizontal line. I'm going to use my third color for that line. So to make a clean transition, I want to have my pull through of those last two loops with my third color. So in the same way, I just take my third color, tie it around that main color yarn. Then to finish that return pass, I'll use the third color to pull through so I'm ready with that loop for my row. Now I want to move my main color thread over to this edge for this row so it doesn't tangle up with my other colors. And then I'll move it back when I use it again the following row. So I find working on a table surface when I'm using multiple color changes is easiest to help me not tangle up my yarn and you might find that helpful as well. So now for this row, I'm just going to be using my third color as my main color, making my color changes as I come to them around here. So you can go ahead and work that row as we did for that. If you prefer, you can use the same color contrast color, so the entire row would be with your one color then. So that's up to you. And here's an example. Here's an example then of the same contrast color used for all elements. So I've decided to join a third ball of my contrast color for this new note starting here. Again, it's up to you if you want to carry or join a new ball. So I've worked my five loops to start. I want to take a contrast color for three stitches, doing that under over technique while I carry my other color across. Drop the contrast, pick up loops in that third color until I meet my next music note. Lay 
that across. Grab my second ball of contrast color. And I have just two loops this time. So I go under my carried loops on the back and over. I have one more of the carried white on the back. I'll go under it. I need 10 loops. That's one, two. drop the main color. I'm going to take my third contrast, pull it over while I pick up these next. I forgot to go under. Under the carried yarn. Yarn. Oops. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yarn over, pull up a loop over the carried yarn under the carried yarn and I need to go over the loop behind as well. and then this time go under both of those carried loops behind one white and one taupe I have four more I need in this color is over so it's under over, under, and over, drop my colored, and finish the row with my third color. remember under those two loops on the side edge for our final loop and then working our return pass just changing colors as we come to that next color and so on so you can go ahead and finish that return pass and I'll join you at the other edge. You want to make sure you leave these last, you want to leave two loops on your hook at the end so we can change back to our main color. So I'm at the end of this row. I'll grab my main color again to finish that. And then you can decide, I'm going to cut my third color just so I don't have quite so many um, tails or balls hanging on the back of my yarn. You could carry it up the next four rows when we use it again, that choice is up to you. Just leave it hanging loosely up the side. I'm preferring not to, but that choice is yours. So we have worked these six rows so far and have established our pattern and how to change colors. So really, the rest is all up to you. You get to follow this chart that's in the written pattern, watching these rows carefully, changing color as you need to, and count, count, count those squares in between. So have fun with this. I will meet you at the end of our square and to help you work the border around it. So when you have finished this Tunisian chart, you should have something that resembles a music staff with a treble clef, some eighth notes, and a quarter note. So something like this. We don't want to bind or fasten off at the end of the last row, but we're going to swap out our hooks. You can put your Tunisian hook aside and grab your standard crochet hook, the five millimeter version, or the five millimeter size. So as we work this next row, the pattern calls to keep with your same main color. I am switching colors so that you can see the stitches a bit clearer for the video purpose. This row is normally referred to in Tunisian as the bind off row. 
to create a nice edge across the top of our work. We're going to chain one, which will count as a stitch. We want to insert our hook under the vertical bar and through that hole or space, just under the horizontal bar, out to the back to pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So we're making single crochets. Often this bind off row is done in more of a slip stitch, but we're going to use the single crochet style here. And if you're familiar with Tunisian, we're working it as though we're working a knit stitch. Under the vertical bar, under the horizontal bar, pull the loop through, complete a single crochet. So we're just going to continue this down the whole top of our square, including our starting chain. We should have 44 stitches, so I'll meet you at that point. As you work this last stitch of this row, you still want to put it under both loops on that side stitch to pull up and make that final bind off or final single crochet. So 44 single crochet, we'll chain two, and we want to work 34 single crochet down the side, and that should be in the end of each row, including another one in this very first row where we just placed our last single crochet. So 34 stitches down the side, that's two, three, four, and so on, and I'll meet you at the bottom of the square. So that's 34 stitches down the side edge of the square. We will chain two, and again, working across the bottom, placing a single crochet in each of the ends of our chains. So this first one, one, two, three, and four. And again, you should have 44 stitches across. So 44 stitches across the bottom, the last one being in that final stitch or the first edge stitch of our first row. Chain two, oops, I already have. <laughs> so we chain two again, single crochet in the side of that first row edge and up the side. Remember we want 34 stitches up the side. 34 stitches, chain two, join to our first chain one to complete this row. You can fasten off and chain the color. We want to start in the bottom corner and remember to use whichever stitch that you need for your size. I'm going to be using the double crochet as written, but you can substitute, no, I'm actually going to be using the half double crochet. Double crochet as written, or you could use single crochet. So whichever size of stitch you're using, just follow the counts for this round. So starting in this bottom corner in the chain two space with your first stitch, a standing stitch. Skip the first stitch and then we'll work into each of the remaining 33 stitches down the side. So after the corner stitch, we have 33 stitches down this first side or up this first side. Then in the corner space, we'll place a stitch, chain two, and another stitch in that corner. Then working across the top, in this first stitch, we will place a stitch and then we'll do a two together. So with a half double crochet, a yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through all loops for a two together stitch. And then after the two together, we'll place one stitch in the next. And we'll repeat that 10 more times one stitch in the next stitch, a two together stitch worked over the next two, one stitch in the next. 
So this will help with, you might notice that your top and bottom edges are sort of flaring out a bit by putting these two together stitches here that will snug that in and square up the piece. So we repeat that down the top, one stitch in the next, two together over the next two, one stitch in the next. So you can go ahead and work that a total of 11 times down this top. So once you've worked that 11 times across the top, we should be ready to work in the corner space with our stitch, chain two, and stitch. And then we'll turn, there we go. We'll turn to work down this next size, skipping that first stitch, and then working a stitch in each of the 33 down the side. So you can go ahead and work that. So we've got the 33 stitches down the side, ready to work our final corner. The stitch, chain two, and a stitch. I guess this is our third corner. And then working across the bottom, we will work a stitch in the first stitch. two together stitch over the next two stitches and a stitch in the next and repeat that a total of 11 times across the bottom and I'll meet you at the final corner so 11 repeats across the bottom and then we want to add one more stitch in that corner with our starting stitch chain two and then join to the top of our starting stitch to finish this round. So for round two of our border, this is the final round of the square. The pattern is written for double crochet. If your square is quite large like mine is, you can use a half double crochet or even a single crochet. And I will be substituting a single crochet for this round, but it's written for doubles. So you can start around any stitch on any side. Um, you might wanna start down by the corner and work your way up. I'm just gonna show you a few stitches. It's going to be a back post double crochet around each of the stitches. In my case, I'm just using a single crochet for size. So you'll single crochet back post, work back post stitches around all the stitches of the side. And once you get to those corner spaces, you will add two stitches, chain two, and two more stitches. And then back post around each of the stitches. So again, I'm using back post single. You might be using back post half double crochet or back post double crochet as written depending on what you need for size. So you can go ahead and add these stitches all the way around, joining to our starting stitch and fastening off when you're finished. So that ends the Music Notes Square. Thanks to our designer for a unique design. And I hope you enjoyed, especially if this was your first Tunisian project. Well done, and hope you will continue with others. See you next time.